Super Mario, Mr. Video on himself. Mario's been the go-to guy for gaming, like, forever. From the pixelated glory of Super Mario Bros. to the 3D owner lands of Super Mario 64, Galaxy and Odyssey. And yes, even Sunshine. Mario can't escape epic adventures. But what if we shrunk those adventures down, like, tiny enough to holding the palm of your hand? Well, enter Mario Handheld Adventures. For nearly four decades now, they've been the go-to for kids and, let's be real, gamers of all ages who didn't have a home console to enjoy. And, and guess what? I was one of those kids. Hey, it's me, Pedro from Nintendo. nice to meet you. Today, we'll be diving deep in the world of Mario handheld games, and why would it? We'll be ranking them. After all, why not? I must confess something. I was more of a Sonic kid myself, so... I missed on a bunch of Mario's Portable Adventures. And with the Nintendo Switch marking the end of an era for handheld gaming, I figured it was time for me to see what I missed after all this time. Well, unless Nintendo pulls a fast one on us and goes a different direction with their next console, if that's the case and you are watching this video in the future and Nintendo launched the Switch 2 and it's a completely handheld game, Drop a comment down below saying how I missed Super Mario Shmongus 2 or something, or whatever they've got going at the moment. Whatever, just engage with the video, I don't care. Anyway, <laughs> the plan here is to give these games like mini reviews and rank them in a tier list to preserve their legacy in game history and not let them be forgotten. Now, when I did something similar for Sonic, I left out direct ports from home console because sometimes that happens, they just Port a game that was on a home console to a handheld console, but y'all just weren't having it, so this time everything is fair game. However, I won't be ranking games from series that eventually did their own thing, like Yoshi and Wario. I mean, if Super Smash Bros. of all things consider them separate things from Mario, we might just say the contrary, right? And if you have a problem with that, you can talk with the man himself, Sakurai. Isn't that right? But hey, I know you guys are gonna kick a fuzz about it anyway, so here's the deal. I will compromise and rank the first game of those series before they went off on their own. Right? That seems fair, right? Okay. After all that, some of you might still think that's a cop-out, but listen here. By the time we're done, this list will have over 60 games. Cut me a slack, please. Also, I'll do my best to be fair here, basing my ranking in the contest and the time these games came out. To keep things as close to home as possible, I will be playing most of those games on my soft modded Nintendo 3DS. Uh, almost. There's one exception, but we'll get into that later. What's that? You wanna know what soft mod in your Nintendo 3DS? Well, you can find links on how to do that in the internet. Serious guys, you don't even have to leave YouTube for that, do your thing. Oh, and a little reminder that this is my ranking, so if you disagree with anything, well, suck it up, because I'm right all the time, so... Let's get this shit started now. So, anyway... Uh, it's basically just Breakout, you know, that classic brick breaking game. Hey, it has a little Mario flair with a tiny cutscene in the beginning and a the life count, so technically it's a Mario game, but honestly, um, it's not bad, it's just meh. I would slot it in the six here. Again, technically, baseball is a Mario title, right? I mean, just look at the box art. And the team players' names! Now, full disclosure, I'm no baseball aficionado. In fact, I've never even played a sport before. But hey, it was mildly fun. Definitely more impressive than anyway, but it's not quite hitting out of the park. Gonna throw it in the seat here again. Now we are talking. This one is the game changer. Super Mario Land is like the Game Boy's showcase, proving it's not about simple short games like Tetris, or, you know, anyway. This thing could handle full-fledged games like any other console, but let's be real, it's not perfect. The physics are kinda weird. 
Don't even get me started on the run button, it messes with the whole flow of the game. I've had so many deaths where I swear it wasn't my fault. It was on the wonky mechanics, it was super frustrating. But you just can't deny the passion and creativity that was poured into every single stage. Plus, that soundtrack, fire. It's a solid B tier. Yep, it's just golf. And spoiler alert, I suck at it, like, big time. Again, never played this part before, and this game does nothing to ease you into the world of golf. But hey, at least there is a little more substance here than baseball or alleyway, right? I don't know, I guess not, so sit here. Have you ever wondered what Tetris would be like if it wasn't really Tetris? That's Dr. Mario! Now with the character front and center, he has finally a puzzle game to call its own. But I gotta admit, without color, it kinda loses its charm a bit. Still, it's a nice little game for those quick game fixes, and it is somewhat addictive, you know, so it goes in the A tier. Talk about an upgrade, huh? I'll be honest, I was worried that Mario's sprite would be too big, making the levels feel cramped, but the level design totally accommodates that. And the soundtrack is killer as usual. Bunny Mario? Already a favorite transformation of mine. Even if it's basically just Tanuki Mario all over again. The physics can still be a little bit wonky, but it's way more playable than the first Mario Land. And I dig how open-ended the level structure is, kinda setting the stage for the future Wario Land series. Oh, and fun fact, this was Wario's grand debut. Eight tier material, no doubt. Speaking of Wario, let's dive into Super Mario Land 3, aka the birth of the Wario Land series. Despite being the first in the Wario Land lineup, it's technically still the third game this team tackled, and oh boy, does it show. Tight design all around, from road to levels. Wario is a tad slower than Mario, but it fits perfectly for the less linear, more explorative stages. A trend they would only refine over time. The controls might still feel a little bit clunky, but overall it has solid controls. It manages to hit all the right notes and stands out enough from Mario to spawn its own series. A tier for sure. Sure, at first glance this might seem like your standard Donkey Kong arcade port, but man, does it open up after the fourth stage. Mario's feeling more athletic than ever, with a bunch of slick moves up his sleeve. And the gameplay loop is as addictive as all heck. Plus, if you're playing on the Super Game Boy, you get a pop of color and better sound. I don't know how to explain it, man, but this game is just awesome. This one goes into the S tier. Alright, let's talk Picross. And let me tell you, I f suck at it. I've tried before, but it never really clicked for me. Now, this is specific version, it's alright, pretty easy on beginners, so I managed to squeeze some fun out of it. And you know what's perfect for these kinds of puzzle games? The Game Boy. <laughs> but truth be told, it's just another game with some Mario skins slapped on, kinda like Alleyway, so it goes in the C tier. Man, is it a shame that Picross 2 was one released in Japan because it's got way more going on in terms of presentation making the whole experience way more engaging than fun. There are also a lot more of the Mario franchise sprinkled throughout the game. Sure, it's just more Picross to solve, but it's so much better the second time around. 8 tier. Game & Watch Gallery is a 4 mini game collection featuring Game & Watch classics, with a Mario makeover to spice things up. And for a game dropping so late in the Game Boy's life, I was hoping for a bit more sauce. But hey, the games here have enough depth to make them worth a while. Manhole, Fire, Octopus and Oil Panic are solid picks. It couldn't have been a great gen back in the day, so it goes in the B tier. Presentation has definitely stepped up from the first Game & Watch Gallery, and they've got two more mini games in the mix. Now featuring Parachute, Vermin, Helmet, Chef and good old Donkey Kong, right off the bat. Uh, the Game & Watch one, not the arcade. With ball throwing to and an unlockable. But despite the upgrade, the previous game had a more solid collection in my opinion, so this one still hangs in the B tier. So, remember when I said this? 
I will be playing most of those games on my soft modded Nintendo 3DS. There is one exception, but we'll get into that later. That's it. This is the exception. Can you guess what it is? Now the Virtual Boy is... Well, it's, uh, it's in a league of its own. I would say it barely even qualifies as a handheld, but it got its own screens. So why not include it, right? Now, when I first started putting together this ranking, there wasn't a Virtual Boy emulator for the Nintendo 3DS. But since then, things have changed, and there is this awesome emulator called Red Viper, and it's even in 3D, so that's awesome. Just check the link in the description if you get your hands on it. But here's the thing, I really want to experience those games as close to their original releases as possible. And Red Viper just wouldn't do it. In fact, I know it would be a better experience than the original Virtual Boy. So what did I do instead? Well, I got RetroArch on my phone, I loaded up the Virtual Boy core within it and set it up to display the two images generated by Virtual Boy side by side, like this. Then I got one of those cheap VR headsets that you can slid your phone in. I rooked a controller and the real Virtual Boy experience, or as close as it can be without breaking a bank. And if for whatever reason you also want to do that to yourself, check out the Reddit link in the description. But enough about the tech stuff, I'm going in. So, after all that, was it worth it? Well, kinda. The 3D effect is mind-blowing. It's way more impressive than I ever imagined, especially considering the year the Virtual Boy was released. And hey, finally, a game based on a sport that I've actually played. Mario's Tennis, don't confuse it with just Mario Tennis by the way, is the perfect game to showcase the 3D magic thanks to its camera. The stereoscopic 3D makes it super easy to position yourself in relation to the ball and the net. However, there is a big, big problem. The tennis gameplay is just bad. Like, there's almost zero feedback when you hit the ball lacking any real impact. And good luck trying to control where it goes after you hit it, plus it's lacking in game modes and content, feeling like the most basic sports game ever imaginable. Yeah, it might be the first Mario Tennis, but that doesn't excuse this C-tier disappointment. Mario Clash, in the other hand, is the epitome of what the Virtual Boy can bring to the table. Borrowing heavily from the original Mario Bros, making perfect for the quick in-game bursts, fitted for the Virtual Boy. The gameplay is split in two planes, with enemies needing to be dealt with by throwing shells between them. And with that 3D aspect to play, it's great. Seriously, every time I'd miss a throw, it felt like my own fault. I had an absolute blast playing this, and even with my retinas on fire, I kept playing it and playing it, because this game is just so A-tier material. Okay, since I went through all this trouble, I might as well try the one game that everyone says is the Virtual Boy must play. And look at that, it's Wario. Now, despite my rule, and by this point Wario Land was its own series, I'm making an exception here because, damn, this game is something special. It's like a lost sequel that fits snugly between the first and second games in the Wario Land series, and man, it handles like a charm, and while the 3D effect might not be as flashy as in Mario Clash or Tennis, it adds layers to the stages, quite literally. But the biggest flaw this game has is the Virtual Boy itself. The game presents long, maze-like stages that will have you worries begging for mercy. But even with that pain, Virtual Boy Wireland's just amazing. So it lands firmly in the A tier. I bet you didn't expect the Virtual Boy titles to shine so bright, right? Quite literally. Super Mario Bros. Deluxe takes the original NES game and gives it a shiny new coat for the Game Boy Color, packed with a bunch of quality of life improvements. 
it's a stellar part of the first Super Mario Bros. Even outshining the one in the All Stars collection, if you ask me. Plus, it throws in the Japanese Super Mario Bros. 2, aka the Lost Levels, as a sweet bonus. The only downside? Well, the screen crop sometimes messes with the whole level design, since it wasn't really tailored for the GBC screen resolution. And Mario? He's speedier than ever, which can be a tad risk when you can't see too far ahead. Still, it's a solid A-tier material. Gaming Watch Gallery 3 comes packed with 5 minigames right off the bat. Greenhouse, Egg, Turtle Bridge, Mario Bros and Donkey Kong Jr. Plus, there's 5 more to unlock. Flagman, Judge, Lion, Speedball Sparky and Donkey Kong 2. Though, sadly, no Mario makeovers for those. Now, despite posting the best Game & Watch game ever made with Greenhouse in a total of 10 games, it falls a bit short in terms of overall game selection when compared to the previous installments. While not improving the overall presentation, despite the addition of color. So, this is the first C tier of the series. Well, it's just Golf again. What do you mean this has a single player mode? And it has RPG elements to it? Yeah, so apparently this game has a single player start mode, plus RPG mechanics to boot with a charming cast of characters and aesthetic. This time the game does a great job of introducing you to the mechanics, and the gameplay color is surprisingly adept at translating the game of golf. It's just that it's just that golf isn't the most competitive sport out there. Matches can drag on a bit, and it is tough to wait to see how well you are doing against your opponents until the end of each hole. Ambitious? Absolutely, but maybe not the best combination. So it goes into the B tier. Lastly, for the Game Boy Color, we've got Mario Tennis. This one is also rocking a single player adventure mode with RPG elements to it, taking cues from Mario Golf in the presentation department. Sure, it might not have the same impact as the first time around, but man, the music is top notch. And tennis is a lot more competitive than golf, right? With 1v1 and 2v2 matches, the stakes are higher. Sure, the perspective is a bit wonky at times, especially up top, but it gets the job done. And unlike Mario's tennis, the virtual boy one in case you forgot. Here you can actually feel the impact of the racket reading the ball, with some real control over its direction. My only gripe? Matches can stretch on a bit in single player, kinda messing with the pacing. Still, it's one of the most charming games on the platform, no doubt about it. A tier it is. Don't let the fancy name fool ya, it's just Super Mario Bros. 2, and let's be real, it has always been the worst of the original trilogy. Sure, the series was still finding its footing, trying out new things, but did you know it was originally a Japanese style called Duk Duk Pen? Oh, you, you did. Well, that doesn't excuse the boring ass picking up mechanic, those slippery controls, or the janky vertical scrolling that freezes the whole screen for a hot second leaving you wide open to getting whacked by unseen enemies. <sighs> okay, now I'll give you the props for being the most creative of the GBA ports, throwing a ton of new stuff like different sized turnips or giant enemies, but the new added voices, they suck. Especially if you're trying to play a stole. <laughs> It's not that they are even bad voice clips, they are just used too often. Look, I'm sorry if Mario Bros. 2 was your childhood game and all, but there was a reason people were so hyped for Mario Bros. 3 and its return to form. And this part doesn't do much to elevate the game in any meaningful way. Sit here, plain and simple. Rumor has it that Super Circuit is the black sheep of the Mario Kart family. And you know what? Those rumors aren't too far off. Super Mario Kart can get a pass because it was the original one, but Super Circuit? Nah, not feeling it. It was released after Mario Kart 64 after all, and it could have learned a thing or two from it, but nope, it's stuck in its Super Nintendo ways. 
And while I get it, there were hardware limitations, they could've made tweaks, like to the drift, the camera, the speed, and so much more. Playing this just leaves me feeling meh? Races lack that oomph to keep me hooked. And like, okay, it introduced retro tracks, but even that feels like it was half-baked, if only Super Nintendo was. Again, for some, this might have been their childhood game, but let's be real, as kids, we would gladly chill down on trash and call it gourmet. Sit here. Damn, the GBA is not doing so good, the era barely began and they already have two stinkers. There's just no way they can recover from... I'll be damned, they did it. Super Mario World needs no introduction, it's the OG Super Nintendo gen, beloved by all, a classic in every sense of the word. And now, for the first time, you can take it anywhere with your GBA. Sure, this version doesn't add much to the original game, like Super Mario Bros. 2 over there, but hey, Super Mario World never needed that to begin with. And yeah, they did toss in some voice clips for that extra flair, and thankfully, it's not overdone like in the previous one. Music might not hit the same high notes as the original, but it's still damn good. And sure, there's a slight crop to the screen, but it ain't nothing like Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. This is Super Mario World through and through, with its epic gameplay, world map, level design, secret exit, and charm. S Fucking tier, no question about it. Technically, this is a Yoshi game, not a Mario one. But when the original game released for the Super Nintendo, it still fell under the Mario series umbrella. Heck, this part is even called Super Mario Advance 3. But honestly, I would use any excuse to play this masterpiece again. In this game, we are on a quest as Yoshi to escort Baby Mario back to safety and rescue Baby Luigi from Baby Bowser. While we travel across Yoshi Island, we will visit impeccably designed levels, each with their own special flavor, all wrapped up in this gorgeous art style. It's hands down one of Nintendo's finest 2D platformers. Sure, the music quality is a bit off, and the only addition to this part are some voice clips, but who cares, it's a nastier masterpiece for sure! Game & Watch Gallery 4 is the final installment of the series, and it's probably the most complete one. Starting with 6 and unlocking up to 11 minigames, it's a hefty collection of handheld classics. With Fire, Boxing, Cement Factory, Rain Shower, Donkey Kong 1, 2, 3, Octopus, Mario Bros, Chef, Fire Attack, Manhole, Bombs Away, Tropical Fish, Bomb Sweeper, Parachute, Climber, Safe Buster, Lifeboat, and freaking Zelda. The Game & Watch one, not the NES version. And with the GBA's hardware, everything looks and feels so much better. But here's the thing, despite the impressive lineup, I couldn't shake the feeling of... That's it? With every game. I mean, I was hoping for the modern interpretations... Well, I guess it's not so modern anymore. I was hoping for it to do more, you know? Like, like I don't know, taking fire and making it like... Puppy Love from f Engine 2, that shit was Fireman, but not intended. Don't get me wrong, it's a solid collection, but it doesn't quite take advantage of the new hardware to push boundaries in any way, shape or form. See tier it is. Absolutely silly name aside, why the heck not, am I right? I mean, Nintendo's right dropped two classics on the GBA, but they weren't done yet. So here comes fucking Super Mario Bros. 3, another masterpiece that needs no introduction. This part's based on the Super Mario All-Stars release, with a fresh coat of paint on the graphics and presentation. It's a behemoth of a game, boasting some of the best level designs and power-ups in the whole series. It's jam-packed with content, more than enough to make Mario World and Osh Island sweat a little. What else can I say? Super Mario Bros. 3 is a legendary title. Whatever if the music's not quite up to par, it's just Super Mario Bros. 3. At this point, the only Mario game missing from the GBA is the original Super Mario Bros. 
And yeah, I know the classic NES collection exists for the GBA, but they are just the same NES games running on them later. No bells or whistles added, so for this list of handheld games, they're not making the cut, okay? Anyway, what's next? Oh, <laughs> had enough sports games with RPG elements to it. But what about a full-fledged RPG on the go? Yeah, that's it. Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga is here to fill that void. And man, does it deliver. From the get-go, you can feel the personality using out of every pixel. The opening cutscene? It's just pure gold, man. Every character on screen at any given moment uses with charm. Buckle up for a wild ride with Mario & Luigi. From quirk locales to a cast of charming characters, these adventures got it all. But what really sets it apart is the combat. You will control both Mario and Luigi at the same time, which add a fresh spin, keeping things alive and ever evolving, with every new enemy having a different attack pattern. It's the kind of game that the GBA was made for, and it's right up there with Battle Network as the cream of the action RPG crop. Absolutely acid tier material, no doubt it. Mario Golf Advance Tour is an interesting beast. It's a sequel to the weird experiment that was Mario Golf with its single player RPG mode, and with it, it brings everything that made the first installment unique. But truth be told, it's more of the same, just with fancier graphics. Sure, the visuals are top notch, but at the end of the day, it's just golf. If anything, the higher graphics fidelity just makes for the golfing mechanics to be a little too complicated. I was honestly hoping for some more outlandish moves to take advantage of the hardware and to match the RPG aesthetic, but Pangea, this is not. Sit here for this one. Don't let the name and what it would eventually become for you, Mario vs Donkey Kong is a true and truly sequel to the classic Donkey Kong 94 on the Game Boy. And let me tell you, it's almost as much fun as its previous installment. Sure, Mario might not be as versatile this time around, but he still got plenty of moves up his sleeve. And personally, I'm not too keen on the art style, but that's just a minor gripe. Overall, it is still a solid A tier game that's sure to scratch that platform itch. I'm scratching my head here, wondering why Mario Pinball Land even exists. Bimbo and Mario? It's, it's not exactly a combo that screams perfect match. Sonic? Definitely. Kirby? Of course. Pokemon? Sure. Metroid? Why not? And yes, the team behind this game would later develop Metroid Prime Bimbo on the DS, but Mario? It has never crossed my mind. But that being said, I'm still so glad it exists, because it's a banger. I've never seen pre-rendered graphics look this great before. It's like the characters jump straight off an animated movie or something, bursting with color and personality. And the creative on display here is off the charts. You'll be exploring stages as a pinball, unlocking new areas, stars, and even bosses. My only gripe? The ball physics can feel a bit too slippery at times, adding an extra layer of luck-based frustration. Still, despite its odd pairing, it's an expected A-tier gem. Mario Party Advance takes a different approach compared to previous installments, focusing more on the single-player aspect. And hey, I get it, it's the first handheld title in the series, so gathering a group for some multiplayer in my hand would be a stretch, everyone needing a cup of the Game Boy plus the Link Cable. Instead, we are traversing a game board, tackling quests to snack stars until you are ready to take on Bowser. Sounds cool, right? Uh, well, well, those quests are basically just more minigames, and after a while things start feeling a little too repetitive and dull, and with all the multiplayer, it, it loses its charm very, very fast. Still, it, it's a solid attempt, with a charming aesthetic, but ultimately, it falls short, not going beyond the seats here. Next up, we've got Dr. Mario plus Puzzle League. It's just Dr. Mario, but with more colors this time. And honestly, there is not much you can do to improve Dr. Mario without changing the core formula. It's a decent puzzle game, sure, but it's not exactly breaking new ground. It does share its cartridge with Puzzle League or Pano de Pong, another solid puzzle game. Personally, I'm more of a Puyo Puyo fan myself, but hey, variety is the spice of life. 
Both games are great distractions, but by this point in the GBA's life, I was expecting a bit more to tie in the package together, you know? So, to the C tier it goes. Last but not least, let's serve up with Mario Tennis Power Tour. This sequel sits comfortably in the top 10 most charming games of the platform easily, bringing back all the best parts of its previous installment and cranking up then a notch. But here's the thing, it also brings all the same problems. The lack of new improvements means it falls short of reaching its full potential. And it's a shame because with a bit more innovation this game could be top notch. But as it stands, it doesn't quite capture the magic of the Game Boy Color counterpart and fails to stand on its own. So it gets a respectable B tier from me. And that's a wrap for today, folks. What? Don't blame me! Mario's handheld library is just damn huge that we got is split up in two parts. In the next video, we'll take a look at what the Nintendo DS and the 3DS have to offer. And let me tell you, I'm really pumped for that, because that's when I really started getting into Super Mario. It's gonna be a trip down memory lane for sure. And feel free to leave a comment down below, even if it's just coming names for ranking your favorite game or whatever in the C tier. I don't care, just engage with the video. Anyway, once again, I've been Pedro from Nintendo, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye!